Well, the International Space Station is retiring in 2031. NASA says it plans to bring the space lab back to Earth by uh, crashing in it into a, a remote part of the Pacific Ocean. It's called Point Nemo. So what can we expect to learn from it before this mission ends? Well, Commander Chris Hadfield is with us, retired astronaut, former commander of the International Space Station. So good to have you back with us. Thank you so much. Um, I should I'll point out, he's, of course, he's also the author of The Apollo Murders. Commander, thank you so much. Um, listen, the ISS, um, when we talk about 2031 and it crashing into the Pacific, some people go, wait a minute. What is that going to look like and how how uh, reliable is it? And I say that because we know that there's a history of some uncontrolled uh, reentries here. Skylab, for instance, the first U.S. space station uh, reentered Earth's atmosphere back in 1979. And, and parts of it hit Australia, if I if I remember correctly. So talk to me about your confidence uh, in this going right. Yeah, that's the whole point, Christy. That's why NASA is already talking about it right now. I think uh, whether it's in your personal life or when you're launching spaceships, you need an end of life plan. And uh, for the Mir space station, which was the, the Russian station before this one, they drove it into that same part of the South Pacific. But with Skylab, the first American space station, the one you mentioned, there was no end of life plan and the, uh, the shuttle wasn't ready to bring it back. So it just sort of randomly burned up and then it could hit anywhere on Earth. So we're being really careful with the International Space Station. I mean, the first piece was launched in 98. We had a big laboratory launch to it last year. It's good for at least another eight or nine years, but eventually, you want a good plan, and, and that's what we're going to do. So, as I understand, the majority of it will incinerate uh, upon reentry. Is that correct? Yeah, something most people know don't know. The Earth gets hit by about 40 tons of rock every day, of meteorites hitting the world, 40 tons a day, and they all burn up in our atmosphere. And so the space station will be like one of those. Most of it will just incinerate and turn to that fine dust that you see coming down in a sunbeam. Oh, so we could be looking at a meteorite. Who knew? But so my question is, this does bring us to something. We were actually talking to Janet Ivey about this last week. The space debris that's out there. I mean, there is some real concern uh, for the risks and, and the threat of uh, the satellites and of the, the astronauts that go up into space at this point because of that. What is your concern and what do you think is the biggest threat from that space debris right now? Well, imagine while I was commanding the International Space Station, and if you wait quietly, you could hear little pieces of thing ricocheting off the hull. So yeah, we have to think about space debris, and we need good regulation so that anybody who launches something to space has a full life cycle plan for it and a way to deorbit it at the end of its life. And we haven't done that very well up until now. But it's a really good time to start doing that. We need better regulation, especially since the cost of launch has gotten so much radically cheaper with what SpaceX is doing. So it makes it easier to get there. So that just means we need better regulation for taking care of everything that's up there and what's going to happen you know, when, when they reach the end of their useful life. Right. So whose responsibility is it to you know, clean up space, essentially? That's a big problem, actually, right now, Christy. It's like whose responsibility is it to clean up the oceans? You know, that the, the common ground on Earth or common water, it's hard to make someone responsible. So you have to address it a couple of ways. But one is just no country's allowed to launch unless they have a plan. So anybody that they issue a license to has to show that they have a plan. But the actual cleanup, I'm actually involved with a few companies and operations right now to, to try and come up with the cleverest way we can, just like cleaning up trash on Earth, to try and do it as, as efficiently as we can with the problem we have at the same time not making the problem worse in the future, like we're going to do with the space station in eight or nine years or whenever we actually retire. Yeah, yeah. The 2031 is not a, a hard out, as I understand it. But real quickly, before I let you go, uh, the ISS has just done such remarkable work. What is, what is the alternative then? Because is it, something like that is certainly still needed. Well, what's really cool, Christy, is since, uh, you know, I helped build the station 20 years ago and, and uh, commanded it 10 years ago, um, the cost of launch has gotten so cheap that now it becomes uh, commercially viable for private commercial companies to put up space stations for research, 
for, for uh, like building things and for tourism. And that's what NASA is handing over Earth orbit to. And there are at least four different space stations that are in early stages of funding now on a mm -hmm. commercial side. And that'll free up the rest of the universe for NASA to go explore.